We want to talk to you in a different way today because we want you to, since you are teachers of teachers who are teachers of teachers, and since there are so many in your experience who want to be deliberate creators, they want to feel good, they would if they could, we want to help you to understand that wherever you are is just fine. We want you to understand that you can get to wherever you want to be from wherever you are. And it's time for all of you to stop measuring where you are in relationship to where anybody else is because that is not a factor that has anything to do with you. The only factor that has anything to do with you is where you are in relationship with where you want to be. So here you are in the state of depression and you'd like to jump over here to ecstasy. You remember being there from time to time, but something has happened and you can't make the jump. And no matter how much encouragement you get from people who think you should be able to make that jump, you cannot make that jump because law of attraction says that which is likened to itself is drawn. And when something has happened that has caused you to focus in a way that has caused you to beat a vibrational drum so that that's where you are, you don't have access to those bright, fluffy, sunshine, lollipop and roses thoughts. You just don't. And what we want you to hear and feel from us here today is that's all right. It's all right wherever you are because you can get to wherever you want to be from wherever you are. You just can't make the jump all at once. So here you are in your very strong, suffocating, can't get a breath of air grief. And then you find something. You don't even really know how you found it. You find a thought that as you find it, is a thought of intense anger. And as you focus upon this angry thought, a thought that you would not want to verbalize because your lollipop friend will jump all over you if you do, don't you acknowledge that that angry thought is an improvement over that suffocating, disempowering, grieving thought? And can you hear us when we say that if you take that angry thought and you just milk it for all it's worth. You beat the drum of that angry thought and then you consciously acknowledge, hey, at least I'm breathing again. I feel better. Can you hear from us that you have just regained your power? Because if you can move from depression to anger and consciously know that you did it, you can move from wherever you are to wherever you want to be. But so often what has been happening to so many of you is you have unconsciously, even subconsciously, found in a sort of self-survival way the angry thought because you're being guided to it from your beloved source energy. But because it wasn't sunshine, lollipop and roses enough for your standards or somebody else's standards, you did not see it as the progress that it was and then you condemned yourself for not having done better, in which case you moved right back into your depression. So you move from where you are to a little better to where you are to where a little better to where you are to a little better, but nothing gets any better. And then you feel stuck, you feel powerless, and we want to say to you that you are such powerful beings. It's who you are. That feeling of freedom and that feeling of power. And we want to say to you, the ultimate freedom is the acknowledgement that you are free from that awful feeling of disempowerment. In other words, freedom and power are the same thing. You are free to feel good. And the most disempowering feeling in the world is that feeling that you can't control the way you feel. And that's what all fear is about. You fear that you will not be able to feel good which you know is the way you're supposed to feel. So your vibrational emotional meter is all about that. So now you've moved from your depression into your blessed anger. And if you are in control of yourself and you consciously say, I feel better, I've chosen an angry thought and it is an improvement. Now you can begin the new mantra which we are wanting you to continually offer, which is no matter where I am, I'm going to reach for the best feeling thought that I have access to. Now that's a little departure from what you've been hearing from us and some others who say follow your bliss. And do not misunderstand, we think following your bliss is the best decision that any of you could ever make. But when somebody says follow your bliss when you don't have access to anything other than agony, it's not very good advice. 
But when you say to yourself, well, I might be following my bliss, but I might have a few stop-off points along the way, <laughs> such as rage <laughs> and infuriating anger and anger and frustration beyond description and aggravation and overwhelmment and hopefulness and pessimism and optimistic pessimism and pessimistic optimism and optimism and belief and knowing. I may take a few stop-offs on the way, but friends, you got to let go of one thing before any of this will work for you. You got to stop caring what anybody else thinks about where you are. It has to matter only to you how you feel. You have to take the life-giving breath that you find in that blessed anger and you have to feel proud of yourself for having made the jump, no matter how small it is. Because once you do that, you've regained control. And once you've regained control, there's no place you can't go. As Jerry and Esther are traveling, they traveled a great deal from Phoenix to San Diego. It's about a 400-mile drive. And about halfway between Phoenix and San Diego is a city called Yuma, Arizona. So as they find themselves in Yuma on their way to San Diego, they don't get so depressed that they just turn around and go back to Phoenix. They don't say, but wait, we want to be in San Diego. What are we doing in Yuma? <laughs> There's no place to eat in Yuma. The discouragement doesn't wash over them to the point that they lose their way and they just go back and forth, back and forth, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma. Because they understand, they understand where they are and they understand where they're going and they understand which direction to stay pointed. And that's the thing that we think that you have not really known because you've lost track of the importance of the way you feel. But when you reclaim your awareness of the importance of how you feel. Now there's never a question about which is the better thought. Sometimes you say, I'm just stuck here. I've been stuck here in this dead end job or in this unhappy relationship. I've been stuck here for so long. And we say, you're not stuck. Things are constantly changing. And you say, Abraham, are you not listening to me? I'm stuck right here. I've been here for as long as I can remember. And we say, Things are changing. They're just changing to the same thing over and over and over. Now hear the power of that. Things are constantly changing. So you're in Phoenix, you're in Yuma, you're in Phoenix, you're in Yuma, you're in Phoenix, you're in Yuma, you're in Phoenix, you're in Yuma. And you say, I'm stuck here. And we say, point towards San Diego and keep going. And that's what we're saying about your emotional meter. If you make a decision that I'm going to reach for the best thought that I have available to me, not the best thought that has ever been thought or felt, not the best thought that I've ever thought or felt, the best thought and feeling that I can achieve right here and now. If that is your new mantra, then you're on your way. And there's no place you can't be quickly. This is what we want you to feel. We want you to feel, feel your work environment. We want you to feel where it is. It's between where I am and where I want to be. That's what matters. Nothing else makes any difference. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter how long you've been wherever you are. The only thing that matters is where you are and where you want to go. Jerry and Esther have a navigational system in their vehicles called Magellan. And there are satellites in the sky and an antenna on the roof of their vehicles and a computer brain under the seat and the computer is talking through the antenna to the satellites and so the satellites always know where Jerry and Esther are. So when they know that they want to go somewhere they just program the handpiece they put in the city and the address and then Magellan calculates the route and says go this way turn here turn here in two miles you will exit. In one mile, you will exit. In 0.4 miles, you will exit. Occasionally, she says, 
when it is possible, make a legal U-turn. <laughs> and quite often she says, please proceed to the highlighted route. But she never says, where have you been? <laughs> and she never says, Magellan has a woman's voice. She never says, how long have you been there? She always calculates immediately the best possible path between where you are and where you want to be. And so does your guidance system. Sometimes you think that where you are and where you want to be is only about, I live in an ugly house, I want a beautiful house. Or, my car is breaking down, I want one that runs. Or, I don't have enough money, I want a lot of money. And certainly, we're talking about all of those things. But your emotional vibrational meter is saying, I'm miserable in not enough money and I will be more joyful in enough money. Or I am miserable in this miserable relationship and I want a relationship that will be more joyful. In other words, your emotional meter is about the way you feel. Do you know the universe is so aware of who you are and what you want that things beyond your ability to even describe them are lined up right outside your door? And all you've got to do is start moving up this emotional meter of allowance in order to allow yourself the full receive of all this stuff. There isn't anything you need to do except get the pillow off your own face. And the way you get the pillow off your own face is by reaching for the relief. That's the key word. Reaching for the relief of the improved thought. Oh, isn't it wonderful to know that all you got to do is reach for a thought that gives you a little relief and acknowledge that you found the relief, pat yourself on the back and you're back in control of your own life no matter where you are on the vibrational scale. Some of you have been listening to us for a while and there have been a lot of people sit in this hot seat and most of them jump in at about overwhelmment or frustration. In other words, the majority of the people that you have listened to on the tapes or listened to from the chair are jumping in there around overwhelmment frustration. And so the processes that we offer, like pivoting, the book of positive aspects, the rampages of appreciation, even the focus wheels, move them rapidly from where they are into that better range. But so many of you are teachers of people that aren't right here in this range of overwhelmment. Many of them are in the range of despair. And these processes that we're giving for you here today, these are processes that will help you help anyone. Help you help yourself or help you help anyone to move into that blessed anger. And then let's all have a celebration of the rage. <laughs> but the key is, your mantra must be, I'm going to continue to make the best of wherever I am. The best of wherever I am. And that way, you constantly move. And that way, you'll get to where you're wanting to be. Now, there's one thing that we want to tell you. We'll break, try to break it to you gently. Where you are and where you want to be is going to keep moving. Because you're here and you want to be here. And you're going to get there, but then you're going to want to be here. And you're going to get there, but then you're going to want to be here. And you're going to get there, but then you're going to want to be here. In other words, your joy factor will remain constant as you are continually refining your ideas of what you are wanting. And that's why it is so important for you to be aware of your meter and get everybody else out of the equation. They got their own game going on. They don't understand your game. They don't know how much you want what you want. Have you ever had anybody say to you, I don't know why that's important to you. And we want to say to you, we know why they don't know why it's important to you. They don't know. They don't have the capacity to know. Give them a break. Let them off the hook. Stop asking them what they think. And instead, start paying attention to how you feel. Joy will be yours immediately. And everything else that you think or ever thought would make you happy will start flowing seamlessly, seemingly effortlessly, into your experience. We know because that's the way this universe is established. We know because that's what law of attraction says. And we know because we understand the blessed, worthy perspective, this point of leading edge attraction that you stand upon. It is supposed to be good for you. You are not supposed to have put that pillow over your face relative to anything. It wasn't your plan. Get it off.